Hey guys, my name is Tina. I work at the ORC at Wright State, and I'm taking my final semester of college online while traveling in a van. Through a lot of trial and error, and with the help from some apps and the internet, I thought I would share how I'm able to find free places to stay, as well as some other tips and tricks. I am a student on a budget, therefore I do not pay for campsites. Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, which is mostly out west, is land that allows for free dispersed camping. There are rules, restrictions, exceptions, but there's a lot of really, really great places to camp or spend the night in your vehicle. National forests allow free dispersed camping unless otherwise noted. Uh, always make sure to check in with the ranger station about any regulations like fire bans and always, always, always practice leave no trace. National parks normally have stricter restrictions <laughs> and require a permit for camping. However, I've always been very crafty in finding a place to stay for free outside of national parks. All right, let's get into these apps. They all work pretty much the same, and I really wish that there was just one condensed app, but I pretty much just rotate through all of them to find campsites, search for places to park overnight, and just kind of double check reviews on different sites. First up, we got Free Roam. This was actually recommended to me by someone from Dayton who I met in passing on a beach in Louisiana. Very small world. So there are a lot of different settings. I also always have campgrounds and overnights turned on. Up at the top, there are various settings you can play around with if you're looking for a specific thing. Most rest areas you can stay at for 8 to 12 hours, even up to 24 hours, so those are good in a pinch if you need a sleep. Walmarts, most allow overnight parking, same with Cracker Barrels. I always call ahead just to check, and usually with Walmarts they'll tell me specifically where I'm allowed to park. Casinos also allow overnight parking, however I haven't stayed in one yet. I'm going to set the max price for zero dollars, find some free campsites, and I'm just going to use one that I stayed at as an example. So this is actually called Joe Skeen Campground. So you can click on it, look at the photos, reviews. I find it super helpful if people have left notes about the cell signal because I use a personal hotspot on my phone to attend my classes on my laptop. The reviews are super helpful. I pay attention to the date they were posted. Obviously, if it's a good place, sometimes people will give it like three stars because it was near a highway and so it was noisy. But to me, that's completely different than getting a three star because maybe it wasn't a super safe experience for that person, you know. Next up, we have The Dirt. It is very similar. Not as many places added on here, but I still use it as a resource. So again, I'm going to switch that on to free... And then I'm going to show the same campsite. I also don't have four-wheel drive, so I'm often looking to see if people have left notes and reviews that these places are easily accessible for two-wheel drive. And if they're not, I don't go there. So that's very helpful to know ahead of time. So here's the same campground. You have pictures. You have all of the amenities. And, of course, there are wonderful reviews. This was a great campsite. My favorite is probably freecampsites.net. It's actually a website, but I just saved it as an icon. You can just tap on the map and it'll show you campsites. The green ones are the ones that are free. This has the most campsites, places, reviews of all the apps that I've used, but things could have excellent reviews, but the last review was in 2019. And I'm like, hmm. Has anything changed in the last few years? What if that campsite's not there anymore? So I'll kind of like double check with the other apps just to make sure. Very similar setup. Always hoping that someone has posted about cell signal because if I don't have good service, I may not even choose that campsite because I know I'll just have to drive somewhere with better service to take class. Lastly, I have Campidium. Very similar design. Again, I just kind of rotate through all these apps and use them to check each other. As a little side note, always practice leave no trace. I've done a lot of boondocking or dry camping, meaning that there's no water, no bathrooms, no trash cans and whatnot. So I always, always, always practice LNT and leave these places better than I find them. Some other apps that I have that I use, Gaia and All Trails are both very similar. You can look up hikes, you can see suggested hikes in your area. As you can see here, I'm looking at ones from Big Bend National Park. You can look at reviews of hikes, you can look at other people who have logged their hikes, you can log your own hikes. And what I find very helpful, you can get directions to trailheads. If you have a subscription, you can download maps and routes offline. Gas Buddy! I use this to search for gas prices. 
It really comes in handy with saving money on gas because I can just search places, look them up on my map, see where the prices are the cheapest along my route, or if I know where I'm going to be, like Phoenix, Arizona. And then Wi-Fi map. I actually haven't really used this that much. It was just recommended to me. I usually pick Starbucks, McDonald's, Panera, Walmart, truck stops, and use their Wi-Fi. The main reason I go to Panera is because I have the unlimited coffee subscription. So I go there for coffee, sit in my van, use their Wi-Fi. Hey guys, I'm still learning. So if you have any tips or tricks with traveling, send them my way. Comment so other people can learn too. I hope this video helps anyone curious about traveling and living in their vehicle or just wanting to do some traveling on a budget themselves.